Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for having me. Um, my um, approach to this project um, stemmed from my immediate reaction to the call for um, thinking about mourning publicly. And I initially thought of um, Sandra Bland. And from there, I kind of asked myself the question, how do we mourn Sandra Bland? And I wanted to contextualize that, and I somehow ended up at black motherhood. So if you'll just bear with me for a little bit, I'd like to kind of talk about this through a material feminist, black performance lens. I'll begin. Through a consideration of the ways black mothers navigate unforgiving social political landscapes, both for themselves and their disabled kin, it is possible to interpret their mobilization of knowledge and crafting as a kind of black performance, one which functions as a particular genre of black disability rights activism. Contemporary notions of activism can accurately account for the strategy employed by black mothers of disabled children, but disability history studies reveals a presence of black maternity working for disability rights um, uh, in creative, performative ways, at least since American slavery. Literary examples and official documents from 19th century reveal a relationship between the fight for black disability rights and the role black motherhood on the slave plantation. As Jennifer Barclay states, it appears that the very same devaluation of disabled bonds people that highlights one of the most atrocious facets of racial slavery in the US, equating people to property and judging their worth on their ability to labor for another, was the very same idea that often enables enslaved mothers to remain with their disabled children. While many at the time, while too many at the time, these women were sadly mothering the useless, to them they were raising their children in a world that all too often threatened and and suffered these deeply cherished vulnerable bonds." End quote. The work of saving a dis disabled child from the unknown horrors of the slave market cannot be understated, yet little attention has been devoted to understanding the radical potential of black motherhood as black disability rights activism throughout the history of the United States. Jumping ahead by over a century to the political moment that just passed, we observed that the power of black motherhood and mourning as a political performance can unite seemingly polarized political positionalities. On the second day of the Democratic National Convention, the mother of Sandra Bland declares her support for Senator Hillary Clinton's run for president jockeying between her identity as a grieving mother, a pious, respectable woman, a radical black feminist, and a political agent with the dreams of restoration and change. While this picture of cruel optimism is not without its faults, the mothers of black dead men, women, and children were, as they have always been, between a rock and a hard place when it comes to the needs of their loved ones and the lack of institutional support. Thus, this paper argues for a consideration of the role black mothers play in the lives of their disabled children as a form of activism and as a performance. Racial slavery placed black mothers in particularly difficult situations as caregivers to their own kin and the perpetual needs of their master class. But by using the worthlessness of their children to their advantage, there were many instances of disabled children staying with their mothers, making disability a reliable identity to play up in the fight against natal alienation. Further, this paper argues for a comparative analysis of emotional and, lab and gendered labor, otherwise referred to as anti-work. And here I'm thinking about Kent, uh, Kathy Weeks and her kind of re um, revisiting of the argument for um, actual payment of domestic labor that is often gendered. Um, that enslaved mothers of the antebellum plantocracy and the mothers of the movement um, uh, as exemplified by their participation in the 2016 national uh, Democratic National Convention, utilizing their efforts to advocate on behalf of their disabled kin. The ability of Geneva Reedville, the mother of Sandra Bland, to rhetorically and kinesthetically code switch between respectable women of conservative values to someone with an understanding of the radical black feminist politics that hashtag say her name should be interpreted as a black feminist performance worthy of commendation. What is more, enslaved mothers and mothers of the movement were also engaged in black disability rights activism, and the former are perhaps the progenitors of this very occupation. 
What happens to disability rights activism upon recognition of the ways in which black mothers have garnered support, prevented the sale of their children, and sustained the integrity of their community through the performance of black motherhood? What would it mean to analyze Geneva Reedville's activism as a fight for disabilities rights, and this fight as inherently performative? Alternatively, how might the movement for black lives develop its platform to form ties between black lives and disabilities rights? Even though over 90% of black women who voted in the presidential election voted Democrat, disability rights came up in national debates very rarely. Yet there is much to be gleaned from the longevity sustained by black motherhood as a positionality that can and has found a way to keep the love, the needs, and the legacies of their disabled children from complete and social political erasure. Without disc discounting the very real histories of violence, political, and economic terrorism against black disabled men and women, this paper privileges sites of memory in the form of mourning, grief, haunting, and the public performance of black motherhood as exemplified by Geneva Reedville's participation as one of the mothers in the movement in the DNC. Analysis of the performative qualities of the fight for black disability rights, quote, highlights the intersection of race, gender, and disability, end quote. That's from Jennifer Barclay both on the antebellum plantations and for the movement for black lives. If Sandy still speaks, she does, she does so through her mama. Therefore, therefore, I argue that grieving and mothering while black can be viewed as a time-honored position, or as Lamanda Horton, Horton Stalling says, um, a site of memory within black and US national imaginaries wherein the anti-work politics out of which black disability rights activism has gained considerable success. In midst of a heated presidential debate, the nine mothers of the movement whose organizational efforts garner support and raise awareness for the concerns of families surviving the loss of children due to police brutality and gun violence came together during the second night of the DNC in support of Hillary Rodham Clinton's campaign for the presidency. Fourth from uh, the stage right and in the middle of the semicircle of Mothers in Mourning was Geneva Reedville whose words, paired with the soft maternal aesthetic of her outfit and her homegrown vernacular style of speaking, contribute to the success of her embodied performance of the black maternal figure that has been part of the American national imaginary since racial slavery. Donned in an empire dress, sleeveless, and with the slightest exposure of skin by a slit of, um, uh, in, the skin, in the silk white top she's wearing, kind of reminiscent of uh, former, Michelle, former First Lady Michelle Obama's uh, aesthetic, she is the only mother wearing a little white. Besides the oversized red carnation flower worn by all of, the, all of them, the brightness of Reedville's look offsets the more or less monochromatic garb of the rest of the mothers, with the exception of McSpaden, who's dressed in a stylish um, trim fitted shift. Which, which draw, this draws attention to her figure more so than any other mother. Her choice words and position on this national stage were highlighted by, by the fact that she was the only mother speaking on behalf of a lost daughter, or as Reedville verbalized it herself, she was the only mother to, quote, be spoken through, end quote, by the spirit of her dearly beloved Sandy. And I wanna try and play this, but I don't know how to get there. because he's not good. We're standing here because he's great. Ooh. One year ago, yesterday, I lived the worst nightmare anyone could imagine. I watched as my daughter, Sandra Bland, was lowered into the ground in a coffin. She was my fourth of five daughters, and she was gone. No, no, not on administrative leave, but on permanent leave from this earth. 
found hanging in a jail cell after an unlawful traffic stop and an unlawful arrest. Six of the women have died in custody that same month. Kendra Chapman, Alexis McGovern, Sarah Lee Shirkleberry, Raynette Turner, Raukina Jones, and Joyce Cornell. So many of our children are gone, but they are not forgotten. I am here with Hillary Clinton tonight. Because she is a leader and a mother who will say our children's names. She knows that when a young black life is cut short, it's not just a loss. It's a personal loss. It's a national loss. It's a loss that diminishes all of us. What a blessing tonight to be standing here so that Sandy can still speak through her mama. Gets me every time. Okay, so um, the effective purchase of Miss Bland, uh, Miss Geneva Reedville's speech hinges on her ability to evoke her daughter's legacy that remains legible to the DNC and hashtag say her name, right? So on the one hand, the daughter is voiceless and therefore feminine and on permanently from this earth and therefore immaterial. So without the fear of a black and womanly anger, a predominantly white and liberal audience is invited to receive Reedville as a medium onto which their saviorism, their empathy and guilt may be displaced. Bland's story has created a vacuum into which two camps have been found, have found common ground. The national loss becomes a patriotic rallying cry for the Democratic Party, while her mother's personal loss can become affiliated with the ongoing movement for black lives. Through Reedville's performance of ventrilo ventriloquizing the dead, her positionality at the center of this convex arrangement of black mothers in mourning, and her articulation of a path toward restoration and change, which she says later on in this clip. Her participation with the mothers at the DNC serves as a modern day example of the utility of the figure of black motherhood, which continues to navigate a wide range of hostile environments throughout American history and advocate on behalf of the disabled. Masterfully couching her argument as a mother in mourning between hashtag say her name activism developed by the allies of black women killed in police custody and the I'm with her go out and vote agenda of the DNC, Reedville's rhetorical strategy and aesthetic performance are the embodiment of black radical mothering and disability activism, a site for collective memory with the potential to reach across class, race, and political lines. In Black Feminist and Performance Studies scholar Yuri McMillan's Embodied Avatars, Genealogies of Black Feminist Art and Performance, Mammy Memory is used to describe how black women perform this public role, and in the process are able to tap into knowledges embedded in the National Metaphysical Archive. Mammy Memory produces a zone of re relationality, and I'm quoting uh, McMillan here, that was embodied in the relationship between the enslaved black nursemaids and their white innocent charges. Moving between the far left political slogans of the movement for black lives, allusions to a Christian God in a post reconstruction era rhetoric, and the need to unify behind a leader and a mother for the president, the efficacy of Reed Veal's words hinges on her ability to tap into a quote, collective national memory through the surrogate of an ostensibly ancient black woman, end quote. The Mammy's role in the creation of a generation of white Americanness signals a double current wherein the, a white audience feels invited to identify with the black maternal figure. As a site of memory that fuses black women's gendered labor and the myth of white innocence, Mammy memory allows for both white American subject formation and the conception of black maternal figure as a stand-in for the lost love object. 
While Macmillan's study focuses on the role of uh, photographs of nursemaids and the performance of Joyce Heth, his critical attention to the psychoanalytic implications of a black maternity by proxy in service of national memory holds vast potential in our effort to flesh out the kinetic performance of Reedville um, is a moment where the white liberal fantasies of black maternity served as an approachable image of blackness on the one hand and on the other was also in service of black disability rights. Here, um, the mothers were all serving fashion forward mourning, and here's where I'm talking about the sartorial performance very specifically. But Reedville's particular um, aesthetic also served as a reminder of the working class Sunday service aesthetics associated with the politics of respectability adopted by post Reconstruction era black women, which in turn echoes back to the perception of docility projected onto enslaved black women who labored as nursemaids to their white infant charges. With energetic corporality, she lists the names of the other six women who died in jails across the country during the same week as um, her daughter did, which solicited the hashtag say her name activists attending the convention to respond with, eponymous, with their eponymous slogan. As she spoke each name, the crowd was becoming more and more emboldened, chanting say her name louder with each beat between names. In terms of the tenor of the DNC, this felt like the most politically radical moment of the night in which the illusion of unity was momentarily broken. In terms of, uh, sorry, with more names to read aloud, she catches onto this unscripted call and response between her and the Say Her Name crowd. With commanding air to her, she puts her right hand up to the crowd in a gesture of hushing them. And they kind of crop that out in the actual moment of this scene. The crowd seems to immediately react and no more chanting can be heard. From my perspective, the tension that resulted from this moment was palpable. This deviation from her otherwise demure comportment had the effect of silencing this momentary lapse into sonic traditions commonly heard in protests for black lives. On the one hand, this can be interpreted as Reedville's complicity in efforts to water down the, mo the momentum of the movement. But on the other, it seems as though Reedville required the audience to remain silent and listen for what was to follow um, uh, the list of other um, dead women. She says, I'm here with Hillary Clinton tonight because there is a leader and a she is a leader and a mother who will say our children's names. In her way, Reedville's words pay homage to the hashtag say her name movement, even within the confines of a larger political agenda that genders black death as male and marginalizes the experiences of black women. The gesture of her hand cuts the tension felt between the black radical politics of Say Her Name and the post-racial liberals who were probably made uncomfortable by this unscripted cameo appearance of radical black feminist sonic dissonance. Artfully, she follows up with an emotional plea for her fellow American citizens to vote in the name of reformation and change, thus circling back to her post-reconstruction era politics signaled by her sartorial performance and modern church lady aesthetics. By redirecting the attention back to her kinetic performance of black religious <coughs> grieving mother, Reedville rebalances the scales between black radical politics and mainstream political theater. This deliberate marriage between the streamlined fashion of choices of her garb, when uh, understood to be of consequence to her overall performance as mother in mourning, and the reliance of her embodied knowledge as a God-fearing black woman citizen, is best understood as a, quote, portrayal of multiple subjectivities, end quote, through an emphasis on the body of a pro as a proverbial canvas. The precarious union of mainstream politics and the movement for black lives by way of black mothers in mourning signals a salient aspect of mammy memory as a phantom-like presence in American social formations. As black mothers alienated from their loved objects, the nine grieving mothers participate in their cruelly optimistic search for justice that they themselves cannot enjoy. The smoke and mirrors of their performance rest on their mobilization of their personal, emotional labor, and anti-work politics disguised as politics as usual, which has the ability to ability to bridge diametrically oppositional partisan affiliations whose common ground manifests as the black mother in mourning. Describing the death of her daughter as not just a loss for her, but a personal and national one um, is a clever crafting of US national humanism and paternalism, which she engages for the sake of her daughter, black liberation, and post-work images of the role black life can play when given the opportunity to do so. 
mobilizing black motherhood and mourning in service of the Clinton campaign is, lo is a loaded and complex example, obviously, of how black motherhood garners political and social capital beyond the private sphere it is typically relegated to while simultaneously embodying the political catch-22 of black womanhood. Geneva Reedville's performance is, is a successfully carried out um, performance due to the gendered and spatial organization of this moment, respectable black women standing in an open semicircle with her place at the apotheosis of this convex spatial arrangement. The union of Democratic Party election season tactics and the demands for grieving black mothers was an affective political strategy um, on, the on the part of the campaign organizers who undoubtedly recognized the social capital attached to the national cross-racial movement for black lives. But the MO of the mothers was to galvanize support for their cause through a performance of the black feminine domestic on the white masculine public stage of the United States presidential main stage. Sorry. Uh, they shared their stories, performed black motherhood in mourning, and their show of collectivized support for each other upended the taboo of publicly emoting while black. Many allies of the movement for black lives have castigated them for their participation here, stating that such collusion with the same state sanctioned apparatuses which were responsible for their deaths for the deaths of their children, including the very same policies established by Senator Clinton's husband during his presidency, was exploitative and had a deleterious effect on the more radical demands of the movement. While I do not disagree with parts of this debate, I would be remiss to forget that such displays of deference to the white masculine public powers um, that was that that be was an often a necessary evil with which black mothers had to engage, most noticeably in service of advocating for their children during the centuries of racial slavery in America. Um, and I'll just stop here. To this end, my analysis of, of the private domestic struggles of uh, black women of the US political main stage as a performance with historical precedents in the US antebellum South reveals that performance with performance study scholar Yuri McMillan sees as avatar production by black women, deliberately utilizing black womanhood on public display to tap into knowledges, contribute to contribute to their objectification, but also disrupt presumptive knowledges of black subjectivity. And one final thought. Um, in Texas, there was a House bill file called 222702, and it was dubbed the Sandra Bland Act. And part of my, my thinking here is what would happen if we were to have a Geneva Reedville Act? What would it mean to focus on black motherhood as a, as a starting point for politics as opposed to um, putting it on the periphery? Thank you.